Good evening, everybody, and welcome again to this uh, session webinar on home educating secondary age and stage learners. I'm Alastair, I'm the manager of the home ed team here at Twinkle, and we've assembled uh, a little team to, to guide you through what we've got for you this evening. So I suppose a little bit more about me, I'm a home educating dad. Um, we have three children, uh, two of whom now, scarily are at the, uh, the secondary stage age-wise um, and I've been leading home ed at Twinkle for almost four years now uh, so I'm very invested in trying to help you with um, the business of home educating uh, and all of us on the team are and so yeah this is just to to serve as a little kind of introduction to what we're able to offer you uh, for your secondary age and stage learners so i'm going to bring up our presentation that will guide us through what we've got for you this evening now um let's do that straight away and then we'll let chrissy and amanda properly introduce themselves so hopefully that should be good so yeah title of the webinar this evening is home educating secondary learners with twinkle i'm alice there uh, and I'll let Chrissy introduce herself next. Yeah, so hi, I'm Chrissy. I also work for the Home Ed team as a video content creator, and I do lots of live lessons as well as part of that video content creating. Um, and I have two children, and when my eldest hit school age, I made the decision that um, school was not the right environment for him and um, started home educating. I have another, I have a daughter as well. We're not quite a secondary age, but it's getting close. We were, uh, I, my eldest is now 10. Uh, it makes me feel a bit nervous actually, uh, those double figures. Um, and yeah, as Alistair said, I'm incredibly passionate about helping home educators um, and their young people get the best out of their home ed journey. Thanks, Chrissy and Amanda, over to you. Thank you, good evening. Um, so I work for the Beyond Science team um, and have done for the last six years, but I'm also a home educating parent. So I have three children, one is 17 and so has just finished his GCSEs and started his A-levels. And then my two youngest are home educated. They are, we for the similar reasons to Chrissy, once the middle one reached school age, realized that this wasn't gonna be the path for him so that's what yeah that's me so amanda's our secret weapon as far yes. as uh, secondary stuff goes at twinkle because she's not actually on the home ed team uh she works uh, she said on the beyond team but she's a home educator that gets it so she's um she's a brilliant friend for us to have on that team okay thank you um everybody so just a little bit of an overview of twinkle presumably you all have some idea of uh, of what Twinkle is and what, what it does, uh, that, and that's why you're here this evening. Um, but just a little bit of background. Actually, this is out of date because I think the company has now been on the go for 13 years. It obviously began fairly small scale as a teaching resource site and has grown to be the sort of huge global digital publisher that it is today. Uh, one of the good thing that's good things that has changed about Twinkle is the introduction of segment specific teams so that's why we now have a home ed team um, to better serve the needs of specifically home ed customers and that's a relatively recent uh, innovation the number of resources I'm, I'm never quite sure whether to, to to dwell on this or not because it's obviously kind of a, a blessing and, and a, perhaps a little bit of a curse at the same time the latest figure I've seen is that we do have over a million resources on the site i did a quick calculation before coming on this evening and that means that you could download a separate resource every day of the year for 2700 years uh and that would uh yeah you'd have a different one every day so whether that's good or, or problematic i'm not entirely sure but we do aim to kind of cut through a little bit with what we've got for you this evening and the other thing that's worth pointing out that we we often like to point out is twinkle is a lot more than just worksheets so uh, we'll pick out some examples that we hope will will highlight that point over the course of this evening okay so continuing with the theme of uh, a little bit of a backstory i guess um, we have some thoughts here from the beyond manager 
the the secondary product manager sam um amanda i've got you down to talk through this is that okay yeah that's fine yeah so um when twinkle when it started was based primarily on primary resources and then 2015 branched out to to cover some secondary subjects um and did that for a few years with trying to cover all of the subjects and you'll find quite a few older resources still on site from history pe that kind of subject area uh, but in 2019 reband rebranded re rather as beyond and did a lot of talking to secondary school teachers and secondary school students about what they wanted to see in the resources um, and then narrowed down the focus to english maths and science um, and then for the last couple of years, they've added to that RSE, which is like relationships and sex education and geography. And I spoke to Sam today, actually, there are now over 14,000. Oh, really? That's on, that's on the, the last time we did this was, I think, was it three months ago? And it was yeah. like 9,000. Yeah. No way, that's crazy. 4,000 yeah. in, wow, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure yeah. how many years that, that would take. I've, yeah. I think but that's it's, it's manageable though isn't it it's, it's kind of like a, a a really good range but manageable as well as we'll as we'll see when we look more closely at the beyond area yeah and there are definitely plans to add in other subjects but maybe a lot a slower than than originally yeah um the the team has kind of got a new area at the moment beyond revision which is quite a big focus for beyond um and that's aimed at students in key stage four so those doing gcse's and that has um, revision material on a blog and video and uh, YouTube to help students with their preparation for exams. Uh, so that's good if you've got key stage four age learners, but also they're quite good as a just quick snap, snappy revision of a topic, whether you're studying for an exam or not. Um, and there are also some A-level resources starting to appear on site now. Brilliant. A fun fact, Chrissy, you were um, one of the original Beyond oh, work, weren't you? I was. Yeah. Um, when I first came back as a home editor, I hunted for uh, one of my first published resources on site. But yes, I did six months um, writing resources for history um, before they obviously had that reband in 2019. Um, I did six months with them. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, let's start with some helpful locations in terms of where you might find useful stuff that will help you with your uh, home educating your secondary learners. So uh, first thing to point out is we do have a big main Facebook group with about 27,000 members, but we also have a secondary home ed Facebook group, which is smaller, I think fewer than 2000 members, it's quieter. But if you're not in that already, uh, you can search it on, on Facebook or you can find it via the main Facebook group. That's a brilliant thing to join. And, you know, it's as active as you make it. Um, you know, we're more than, you know, we'd, be, we'd love to have new members and we'd love to have more conversations going on in there. But it's definitely where we share stuff that is, you know, secondary specific. And we might sometimes canvas your opinions on things that we're thinking of doing too. So do come along and join with that. Um, our weekly email is always worth mentioning because that's perhaps our primary method of communication with our members. That's something that you can look out for on a Sunday at 8 a.m. You need to make sure that your career type on Twinkle is set as home educator and you should receive that. Um, if you don't, we can help you make sure that you that you get that. We also have a blog on the, uh, the website. Let's sort of click through to a few of these, which you can find just by typing blog into the search bar. And this is our dedicated home education area. There are quite a few blogs about home educating secondary age and stage learners on there. I'll close that down, otherwise I'll get busy with tabs. And then I think Amanda's already touched on these, the beyond, well, we've got our own YouTube channel, our home ed YouTube channel, but there is also a Beyond YouTube channel. Beyond have a separate blog um, off-site, which you can get to via their homepage. Uh, it's just there, look. 
and I'll talk a little bit more about the homepage in a second or two. And then the vision shop, I think Amanda's also already mentioned. So those are major ways that you can find out about what's going on with secondary specific resources. Okay, in terms of the home pages um, and the home of secondary things on the Twinkle website. So hopefully you're familiar with our, um, our home ed home page. And that's a great way to get to lots of useful places. So we do have a specific um, secondary category on our home ed homepage. So it's just down there. So just to sort of repeat that journey, if I can, let's get back to there. So I just went to view more on the home education specific uh, category there. And we've got home ed secondary resources. Now, this is where we put things that we on the home ed team have made specifically for sort of older stage learners. So we've got things like literature analysis guide. We've done things like life, uh, life skills, challenge packs. There's one there. So this is not beyond material. This is things made by the home ed team for, for older learners. There's another one there, outdoor fun for older children. And then from our home page, there is a quick link through to beyond as well at the bottom of the page. And that's the beyond home page there. It's really well worth getting familiar with this. I think it's very a very user friendly home page. It, it doesn't suffer from having to try and categorize, you know, huge, huge numbers of resources. So it is it is quite usable. And um, yeah, you can dive into the different subjects. It's got those quick links to the other things that we spoke about down the left hand side, a little kind of section that will highlight anything that's new and interesting and the resources that are doing well and are popular at any given time. So those are the sort of homes of our secondary material on the site. We'll take a closer look at them from a subject specific point of view in a minute or two. Right, so this is where we begin uh, focusing in on the resources that are provided by the Beyond product. And Amanda's going to start us off just with a little bit of uh, thought about how secondary and primary resources differ at Twinkle. And this links in nicely actually with a question I just saw pop up about whether or not there'll be a secondary planet soon. Um, so obviously most uh, people that come to Beyond from a home education point of view are coming having used primary resources on the Twinkle website um, and so it can be quite a change to move into the secondary like beyond resources and that's because generally in schools at primary stage everything is taught in a topic so multi a unit might bring in multiple different subjects into one to topic area and that's what Planet does really well it takes a theme and it pulls in resources to cover all of the kind of age and stage criteria from across the curriculum in those. Uh, secondary schools work very differently to that and so once you move into the secondary resources on the website those work really differently too. And so the subject areas are much more separate in secondary. One type of resource might not work for one subject as it does for the other. So it's really unlikely that we as a as beyond will ever have anything like planet to cover secondary resources because the schools just don't work in that way at secondary. Um, uh, those the resources though, there's lots of things that are really similar, um, and we they we can use them in the same or perhaps not use them in the same way, but they can be just as helpful. Um, one of the things when we rebranded branded as Beyond was we talked to lots of teenagers who uh, said, you know, we don't like to see ourselves on resources. We want a very different feel to resources. And that's why something that we might be used to seeing at primary looks quite different when we move into uh, secondary. Um, and yeah, the fact that things work differently for a different subject is why, for instance, in science, we can make a lesson pack that is aimed at home educators, but maths doesn't really work in that way because those type of resources don't work so well for that subject. And that can mean getting to know science resources and getting to know maths resources and getting to know English resources as they might be quite different in those different subject areas. 
yeah and it has its own look doesn't it the um the beyond resources which means it's it's quite helpful in a way because it's easy to spot what's a secondary resource and yeah. what isn't um this is a good example here of two resources that are really kind of similar in in outlook is would you rather resources but this is the more traditional sort of primary twinkle look and this is the beyond look um with the ones that we make on the home ed team we're able to to kind of you know step outside the beyond brand and ours will look a little bit more like you know traditional twinkle primary resources so we kind of get the best of both worlds with that but yes a very recognizable style used for the beyond resources and it is um kind of do recognize that actually with home education as you move into secondary you don't necessarily stop teaching in or learning in topic areas whereas yeah the beyond resources are organized quite differently to that so it's a bit of a jump sure okay thanks amanda and then you're going to talk to us a little bit about um science do you want do you want me to get onto the science kind of page uh, yes yeah, so if you go to so we recognize that um the, re the beyond science resources are written as if you uh are teaching in a school and so that can be a problem for science because obviously there's lots of equipment that we don't have as home educators uh, because we don't have labs or we just aren't allowed to have those chemicals uh, so we recognize that that's a problem for home educators and so what we've tried to do is make um, home education versions of any new lessons that we're putting on site um, so if you go to the um, beyond page and key stage three science um, on the left hand side you can see there is a bit that says science Yay. yes science that's, home that's education see, that is. yeah um so that's uh, that's how i navigate would navigate to home ed science beyond stuff um and so you can see there's categories for investigation packs so that's where we've had um a science experiment on site that we've recognized couldn't be run at home in the way it was written so i have rewritten a version using home equipment that we might have at home and then these uh, lesson packs are um, the a, a version for home which just takes what what we've tried to do is either replace the experiment with something that you can do with equipment from home or where that's not possible so some of the chemistry lessons have uh, chemicals that you're just not allowed to have in the house um, I've tried to offer alternatives or link to or tell you what to search for to find a video of the same experiment this, this was the first wasn't it the, yeah that was the first the and I do like that. <laughs> um yeah so uh, uh, inside each of those lesson packs there is a um parent information guide that kind of explains how to run the activities how you could run them at home one of the lovely things about them as well is when I'm writing I can see oh I'm not restricted to school here are all the things that we can do at home that you can't do in school and I've tried to add those as well so you know we would go out and look at the plants if we were and grow flowers and, and that kind of thing that we can do more easily at home so those are in there as well so there's often additional things in these lessons compared to the school packs so it's always worth checking them out um we are the aim is to have a home ed version of each each lesson but it does take time and then yeah the curriculum map is because our our school curriculum isn't yet complete so the curriculum map for science, the goal is to show you what we would expect each topic area to be in year seven, eight and nine for biology, chemistry and physics. Um, and there aren't links on here yet because our units are not complete yet. But you can go into those categories on the website. Some of them will have complete lessons. Some of them will have just resources random resources that you can use to cover those topics once we have all of the resources ready there will be links added to that map which will take you there as well like the english and maths have um i think that's everything okay fantastic right let's uh see what we've got next so uh next we're going to talk about english so uh english is similarly well uh, provision is a brilliant range of, of content for, for English and the beyond area of the site. Uh, we also, via Amanda, get tipped off of uh, any new English resources that are coming out. We share those in the, uh, when we can in the newsletter or in the uh, secondary Facebook group too. 
so yeah, we'll just have a little bit of a look at the, um, the that area of the site. So if we go back to here, and then on to English. So this is this kind of uh, banner thing is a is a great way into sort of having a more general explore. So you can see that things are split into key stage three units, and then obviously your key stage four GCSE stuff. So um, if you want to explore anything that might support reading, then you'd go into that. There's a great range of engaging comprehensions. There's uh, all sorts of stuff about techniques and, and you know figurative language and that sort of thing. Um, and then you've got similarly writing resources that you can explore in the same way as science, but also a little bit um, different. There is a curriculum map. And what the curriculum map does for English is it sets out all of the kind of complete units that we have uh, for, for the key stage three learning objectives via sort of text or focus. And you can literally, you know, cover everything that you might need to cover in years seven, eight and nine with this document. And when you load it up, it clicks through to, as I say, the brilliant um, lesson packs, brilliant sort of inclusive lesson packs that's uh sorry that's really small let's see if we can zoom in on that there we go so you've got your first unit for, for autumn one in year seven would be this non-fiction unit coach trip you'd click into that and then you have all of the lessons and everything you need and it's really really popular this curriculum map for good reason because it just is off the peg you know you can obviously simplify the lessons and the units or you can kind of put more than one lesson together but it really does give you a fantastic starting point and then similarly uh with the science you can go in via uh you can go in by a key stage you can browse the units you can see all of the units that are included on the uh, the curriculum map there and of course you've got all your gcse units here and then as you would expect, all the sort of uh, revision materials, past papers, uh, and so on that you might also want. So a couple of other things that I wanted to just pick out are the key skills PowerPoints. So these are beautifully um, sort of ready to go way into some literary techniques of so symbolism, inference, that type of thing. Just download them and off you go. And then also very popular in English, so we just keep uh, those tabs down to a minimum, are the sort of cheat sheet things. We see that those are popular in maths, and I'll bring up some examples in a minute for maths. But we've been working on a series of resources recently that we're calling cheat sheets. So literally this, this takes a, you know, a device or a, a kind of English feature, explains it, gives examples and then has a follow-up task. So it's a kind of all-inclusive way of looking at these different devices. So lots to explore there, um, but as I've said before, I think it's, uh, it's, it's nice and manageable to explore. You can quite quickly get the hang of, of what we've got and you know think about how it might be useful to you. Right, so next up on our whistle-stop tour, is maths um, we can look back at the uh, the maths there in a second just again we have a curriculum map um, i won't open this one up but what that does is map out all of the the math strands over the um the key stage three period and the click throughs here go to something which well actually i will open up i said i wouldn't but it's um it is worth showing you this because it's set out in a really, really useful way. So you look at, uh, you've got a kind of strand here and you've got an objective. So look at looking at place value. Um, and then what it does is it gives you a suggestion of something that you should try first to make sure that your learners are in the right place to build onto that with the objective being suggested. So you kind of start here and if they can do that, then you move on to this, which is sort of, I guess, the main objective match to this learning objective and then if they can do that it's also got a mastery task where they can take things further and when you do click on this i think it's really lovely and simple to use you get this walkthrough worksheet 
and it works in a similar way where a concept is uh, introduced uh, you've got an example you've got a quick summary of how it works and then you've got follow-on activities and it's all really nice and manageable so you can you know literally work through the curriculum like that i'll uh, just go back and see what else i wanted to to pick out so the mastery resources we've talked about all sorts of assessments for uh key stage three so you can check where your guys are at one that's been popular in our downloads recently is a year seven assessment and you can obviously sort of check that they've got everything in place before you launch into gcse stuff if that's the route that you're taking and then i did just want to mention these activity mats which are really really popular with home educators as well it's kind of like a almost a mix between a teaching and a revision aid so you can there are all sorts of these so if you download them you um you get a pack of really simple mats that, that you can kind of you know use these once you've perhaps learned the concept if you want to revisit it in that cyclical nature that works to you know to help learners retain things then you can come back and use these activity mats as as a revision aid and they're available in their own section on the um on the beyond site so yeah there's the math stuff uh you can go into it there are your activity mats um there's your ass assessment materials sorry i just have to say i love activity mats i use a lot of the key stage two ones they're good for just dotting around the breakfast table and saying absolutely nothing about um, and yeah. often find i don't know whether it's the way they're all because they're like lots of little tasks on a piece of paper they seem far less intimidating yeah they do. They're very accessible. I didn't know that was what breakfast looked like at your house, though. Well, they're not always. I was just, <laughs> but as in, I think that I just dot them around in various places, and then I finally get picked up and like done. So yeah, they're re I really like those. And and you know, I'm, I'm quickly wondering if that would work here. I'm feeling bad for doubting that it that it would. I like it. Have a go. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, your GCSE materials um, with your, your choice of uh, exam boards and so on, all set out there. And then, of course, Amanda mentioned earlier, I think, about A-level resources, and we do have an expanding range of, of, of resources for anybody taking on maths A-levels too. But yeah, I just recommend having a look around, getting used to the, the, the different resource types, what the assessments look like, the activity mats. Um, which do have a lot of fans and the walkthrough worksheets and then you can also you know if there's a particular um you know strand that you want more on so say if you, you're following the curriculum map and you come up against against something that feels like it needs a little bit more reinforcement then you can find extra sheets here if it was algebra algebra for example then you're going to find a lot of things that can support your further studies with that strand so i think that uh, that will do for maths, which brings us to RSE, which Chris is going to talk about. Yeah, so we also have a really great part of the website, which is all about relationship. Um, there's a whole new scheme all about teaching sex education as well. Um, and obviously one of these things of being a home educator is you sort of move through life um, and lots of things crop up. Um, and it's worth knowing that these um, that these are on site as well. So if you're looking for those, I, I don't I hate that sort of soft skills, but you know I think all of those navigating with relationships and navigating um, with all of those sort of um, aspects of growing up. Um, sometimes as home educators, that can slightly be off our radar. But it's worth saying, as I said, there's all of these packs that again you can pick and choose what's appropriate for your learner. Um, and they're really very accessible and very similar I do think to Planet in terms of if you open them you know you have your PowerPoint you have your resources um, and you know I think that there it's something just to make people aware of that's there because I think sometimes when you move into second GT English math science um, and just to know that those that those are there do we um, want to show where they where do they, they live there so again, really easy to find and to navigate to. And as Chrissy says, you can pick and choose. 
Um, ready to move on from that one, Chrissy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, I cut off some of your text. No, I think that's just the topics in terms of, you know, the stuff about health and well-being. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Sex. So you don't have to go back to the website, but you did it. So you're all, you're all okay. there at the event. Which brings um, us to geography. Yeah. And so then another part, as Amanda said, uh, English, maths and science is, is kind of the main um, kind of focus for beyond, but they are adding extra subjects. And geography is, is kind of another one that they are currently building um and uh, if you've done any of my live content a lot of the live content i've done has come from these beyond packs um and so if you're looking for more topic based stuff uh, a way of springboarding into a topic on top of your english math and science then there is the geography uh, part of the beyond website as well and i would say when you're navigating do click on the units of work because there are lots of historical resources on there and it can be a little bit confusing from when, uh, you know, from from when Beyond first started. So I, I always navigate to where it says units of work, and then they're split between key stage three and key stage four. And I think that it's far easier then to work out what it is that you're doing. Um, and I would say that these are again, if you're used to, you're familiar with using Planet again. I think although they have a different format and they have a different feel to them. They're very, very similar to use with regards to the PowerPoint and the resources um, that are there and the way that they're set up. Um, and just like with Planet, you know, if you, for example, are going to do polar regions at Key Stage 3, you can open it, you can look at the various lessons that are there and you can do whatever works for you, pick out the activities that work for you, springboard off and do other things. Um, you might be thinking, well, that bit's a really interesting thing to do. You could just take sort of one pack, um, one lesson in one pack and just do do a mini afternoon on it. Or you could use it as, you know, a full curriculum. And I've been told from Alistair that they are adding more um, as we speak. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And you're, you're going, these look very familiar from your live lessons, of course, but you're going to um, you're going to mention those in a little while, I think, aren't you? Yes. But yes, I've used a lot of the materials. They're really good. Great, thanks, Chrissy. Hello. Thank you for doing that, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So, just a little bit on the on the types of resource that we probably covered a little bit of this already, but I'll just sort of list these off. So, one thing we haven't mentioned is uh, the debate packs on Beyond, and these are great because they just take really sort of current issues, big issues and help you examine them with your learners and you know if your family's like ours things often come up in the course of your your daily life and you end up you know having discussions about things that you might not have planned to, to explore so these debate packs are, are there waiting for you uh, should you feel the need to use them uh, we also uh, if you're familiar with um, the maths mysteries from sort of key stage one key stage two there are also mysteries um, English bag mysteries and maths mysteries on beyond as well which are really nice and similarly engaging I mentioned reading reading comprehensions earlier I think what's nice about some of the beyond um, reading comprehensions is they're able to delve a little bit deeper into some really engaging subject matter. So, for example, the enduring um, most popular one is about conspiracy theories, for example, but there's also other interesting things. The history of Lego is one that I've picked out. The walkthrough maths sheets are the ones that the curriculum map I showed link to. So those are really worth um, getting familiar with because they're just so easy to use as a starting point or as a you know complete way to teach and recap. Uh, in, in kind of common with the rest of Twinkle, partnership resources are really uh, popular on the beyond area of the site and the beyond team work hard to forge their own partnerships with uh, partners you know where there's the possibility to create resources that are of particular interest to secondary age and stage learners um they've done all sorts of um things in the past what are some partnerships that you guys have worked on 
Amanda, can you can you um we have just made some Spider-Man things. Yeah. Um we have got a range of excellent Ferrari resources that are all about yeah, speed. yeah, yeah. Um, they're really good. And you've done Champions League football ones as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, and WWF. There's lots of I've missed those. Yeah, there's some good oh. ones of those up there. Wild or like Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um so yeah re really worth um keeping an eye on those and then the presentations you know are often a great place to start with it with a new topic and there is there is topical material too so if if you, you know something's coming up whether it's easter or you know an occasion or you know a, a, a kind of awareness day it's always worth looking at uh what beyond might have as well if you want to, to search something particularly for so let's take something like times tables just as an example um, then you can filter once you've searched a term you can uh, filter it by age group and the the twinkle search is is a little bit quirky but you should get anything relevant to the search term for the for the age group that you're looking for so that's worth keeping in mind too but i think as with you know key stage what key stage one key stage two resources is getting used to the types of resources that are out there on beyond and then you sort of know what you're looking for and you know you've got that sense of familiarity okay so on the subject of the twinkle search amanda has a little hack that you can use um just to make the most of it yeah i like quirky is a good word <laughs> Um, and it can be it can be more difficult to bring up beyond resources with the search just because they are newer and so the algorithm likes to bring up more popular things which are often primary resources mm -hmm. um, so beyond have made these searchable indexes and these are updated every month and so we put all of the beyond English resources that are into the beyond English searchable index which means that you can type your keyword into that resource and it will show you it will give you the link to all of those on the website so if you specifically just want to bring up beyond resources and don't want the primary ones to come up as well then um, it's a good way of filtering so that you only see those and same for the there is a, a maths and a science one and also one for celebrations so if you want christmas things that are beyond only so this is literally every english resource made by the beyond team yes yep and so you can search that specifically yeah so hopefully if you search macbeth macbeth would come up but has it gone i've done something wrong it does work <laughs> it does work i promise oh, i can't type on it oh, is, it, is it that Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, discontinue this demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, open in read only mode, that's why. Oh, is that what it is? And yeah. encourage people to yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to ruin it. With it. Okay. <laughs> um yeah, but those uh, so we made those uh, to help make sure that for the people who only want to see secondary resources, that will bring those up. Uh, but the other thing is that the once you get used to navigating the beyond section of the website for me that's that's the way i find resources mm -hmm. i i have played with it enough to to know what i'm looking for and i just use the categories yeah. so if i'm looking for a resource on a particular topic then i at, at, i've looked at the categories enough to know where i would find that and i find that the easiest way to navigate so like you've said a few times definitely just playing around on the website is is helpful for yeah I, th I find that easier than yeah. it. We, we end up saying that in in all of the this series of webinars that we do that getting familiar with the cat it kind of gives you ownership doesn't it really if you can get get used to the way the categories work and like you say pretty soon you can you know get to what you're looking for in a couple of clicks two or three the right sort of thing great thanks amanda anything else on that i don't think so okay so what specific help can we offer you uh from the home ed team chris is going to talk about a few ways that we try and help here 
Yeah, so I'm going to talk about live lessons. So we do a variety of live lessons. They're on every day of the week. Um, and um, they are billed as the ones that uh, are kind of history and geography based. Um, they're billed as sort of being for uh, older primary learners and secondary learners as well. And I think some people say, well, I don't think that that's possible, but it absolutely is. So we do uh, particular lessons and it's because I'm very passionate about um, developing children's skills. So before I became a, a parent, I had 20 years in the classroom and when a child arrived for their GCSEs, um, I taught history, I taught geography, I taught philosophy, I taught quite a few different subjects and it actually didn't matter how much knowledge they had crammed in there. It was about the skills that they had. Could they describe, could they evaluate, could they understand interpretation, could they do basic source analysis, did they understand how to construct a geographical case study? And that was what mattered. And so the live lessons are very much about developing those skills. Um, and with human, what the great thing about all of the humanities subjects are is the skills, unlike maybe maths or science where actually the it gets more complex as you go through the skills for humanities are exactly the same so history skills are the same whether you're six or whether you're doing a phd what changes is the topic becomes more complicated and that's why i will sit here and honestly say that the history and geography lessons that we offer are suitable for all ages what we do is we um, develop a skill in each lesson using a topic so for example at the moment um, with our world learners our geography based stuff we're looking at trade and economics and we introduce lots of things and i often say maybe you might want to go and check this out or this out during the live lesson and then we have a pack um, and they are um, sort of differentiated of things you can do after the lesson so for example next week you, i've just clicked the older learners section um, on there and it says try this gcse exam question um, and it gives you a gcse exam question and it gives you um, a way of you know how you would answer it and, and you can have a go at it and that's using all of the information from the live lessons and the other extra work you might want to springboard off to um, and so if you're looking for something um, I started live lessons, we're getting on for quite a long time ago now, about a year and a half I started them. And the original aim was to just give grown-ups, I know how frazzling it can sometimes be being a home educator, just give some time so that you could have a cup of tea in peace, so that you weren't like me of kind of behind a cupboard eating chocolate to sort of, you know, to have a rest. And But they have really, really grown and I'm really passionate about them being really, really useful. So any feedback um is um always worthwhile two things we get asked all the time number one do i have to watch them live no you can watch them whenever you like um and some people because of their learner decide that it's better watching them at a different time because they can pause them it's a lot slower um, sometimes they like uh, because you can change the speed that uh, a person doing the lesson on YouTube. You can change the speed. Some people like to slow, slower the slower. That's not slow the speed down. Mm -hmm. uh, some people use the, what the subtitles, so they watch them um, at a later point. So that's the very first answer. The second question is, well, where do I find them? Um, and the second one is uh, the second way you can find them. It is. There's always a link on our weekly home ed email. There is a blog that we produce every term. Um, and so you just go to the blog and it gives you all the links. So these are all of the topics we've got on um, during this week. As I've said, the ones mainly based for secondary learners are the ones currently that we have on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. And so that's the history one and you click on it and then it will give you the planning pack and it will give you where to find each lesson on YouTube and where to find each lesson on Facebook. If your young learner likes to kind of type in the chat and join in, then Facebook is the best platform. If you like the control of YouTube um, and there being no chats because it's a bit distracting, um, then um, YouTube, there is a link obviously through to YouTube. 
The other thing to say is that that's the blog for this uh, for this uh, term. But we also are uh, one of our amazing content writers, Joe, has written another blog, um, which has everything we've ever done. It's a huge back catalogue. Uh, so when we're talking about those geography beyond resources, uh, uh, you will find that they are right there. So you just literally log down, go like go down to Key City for click on posts or code regions or whatever, and there they all are as a back catalogue. And if you're watching on YouTube. Um, so if you're watching on Facebook, you can still comment along as if you're watching them live. I get notifications. I sometimes get random questions. That's how I know that they're all still watched. Of, well, what about this? From a video I did a really, really long time ago. The other thing is where, you know, you might want to be like, well, where do I find them? I, I can't find them. I can't find the blog. Well, they're always over on our Home Ed Facebook page. If you go up to the top of our Home Ed Facebook page and you click on events, you will find um, that there. If you go under more on the on, on there, yeah, and you click on events, you will find that the upcoming ones are right there. So tomorrow's one, for example, on Book Club is right there. Um, and then over on our YouTube channel, so if, you, if you're if you sort of, it's two minutes to 11 and you want to like look for it again, if you go over to our YouTube channel and you click on the live bar at the top, so where it says video shorts on live, and again, you will find all of our, uh, all of the lessons that are coming up that week, they'll be in the first sort of, they'll be on the first sort of couple of, um, couple of things. So yeah, so that's where you can find them. Brilliant. And it's it's just there and ready to go, isn't it? In terms of the back catalog, um, free, everything's done for you. So well worth um, well worth checking out. Thanks, Chrissy. Uh, so just another important resource to highlight is the key stage three curriculum map. So this is one that we have made on the home ed team and we've mapped uh basically all of the uh, all of the content uh on beyond so kind of amalgamated the uh the curriculum maps that we looked at before and then filled in as many blanks as we can with the other supplementary resources on the beyond area of the site so this is literally one of our most popular downloads and it's it, it can be a great starting point so if you're you know your your learner's not yet in uh key stage three or you haven't started on this then you've got basically you know three years worth of links here that you can as always you know pick and choose from but a brilliant brilliant um starting point and yeah one of our most popular resources for good reason i think so uh, we're getting close to to the end of what we've got you for you, what we've got for you this evening. Just wanted to pick out some of the things that we also do on the home ed team that are particularly suitable for secondary age and stage learners. So two that automatically spring to mind are our virtual adventures, the the series of resources that center around a sort of story driven PowerPoint, um, take learners off to a different area of the world on a voyage of discovery. But what's great about virtual adventures is they are very, very easy to differentiate. And we make suggestions, su study suggestions in what we call our field guide blogs that accompany the virtual adventures. And so they're a brilliant family thing because you take something like the Amazon, for example, where you can really you know simplify that for any younger family members but you can get into some really sort of um you know meaty learning about ecosystems and environment and um you know all of that sort of thing deforestation and so on so they're worth considering and then our csi investigations if you haven't seen them um there is a, well, there's a category for each of these but i'll just click across to the, the csi investigations now chrissy mentioned skills uh, earlier and these are just brilliant for, for skill development because we what we try and do is take you know a, a, an enigma or a mystery 
and then present evidence uh, and information uh, to the learners taking part and you know encourage them to to try and solve the mystery if you like or develop a theory use the evidence to to support a theory that they develop and sort of pick this this mystery apart and try and discover for themselves exactly what happened and we've got a great range of of things here um, again really good for the whole family and we've got more coming out all the time. So the next one off the production line is going to be the search for Atlantis, which is due any day now. And then after that, we've got a Roswell Area 51 CSI. And of course, these are specifically designed for, for use in, in home ed families. So if you haven't seen those yet, do, um, do check them out. Uh, and then Chris is gonna tell you a little bit about some of our initiatives and projects which are particularly suitable for secondary learners yeah so i saw a um a question quite a long time ago about do we do anything with home economics well yes we do uh because we run twice a year um two cookery things a plate up challenge and a bake off so they're both projects that again are suitable for all learners all dietary requirements and we run them as like a little bit of a community project each week you have something that you have to bake and then we share in our facebook group and people uh, comment lovely things about everybody's bakes and we usually choose some uh, some young people for prizes as well um and so those are really very popular so the next one of those will be uh, bake off which will be coming uh, into its third year um and uh, that will be going out this september and then there's lots of other things that we do. So we have the 20 hours outside where we uh, run, which we encourage people to spend 20 hours outside. Um, the, our page of nature, which we did, um, I still think it was this year. I don't think it was last year, it was, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was November. Was it really? Yeah. Time goes so quickly. <laughs> but it was an amazing project where we asked people to just produce a page of nature. It's almost that simple, but again everybody working uh beavering away doing their very own things and then again sharing them it's it really creates a sense of community um all over where home educators are all over the world and they all share them over um you know their ideas on our facebook group and you know submit their page of nature and again we had a great time looking at all of those and judging those um, the Poetry by Heart competition, which we've just, that's just passed, um, which uh, is run with by uh, with the Poetry by Heart, um, is it a group, an organisation, I'm not sure what to call it, but children are asked to recite a poem, um, and again, um, I think the feedback and certificates for that are coming out shortly. Um, and then we have a partnership with Little Crafters, um and uh, we work collectively with rada over at little crafters offering lots of complimentary resources for the aqa awards um which are kind of accredited awards that you can get through the exam board aqa for various projects um and so again if you're kind of more project based and you sort of still want to be um you know do do little bits of structure but still want that kind of lovely enriching home ed experience and the community projects are definitely something for you and our next one which is coming up on june the 19th is we're going to be encouraging everybody to get involved in a community litter pit yep looking forward to that one thanks chrissy it's not as good as chips in the park though oh yeah that's part of 20 hours outside yeah. so yeah we need to we need to get one of those organized again soon and then have chips yeah absolutely um so subscription wise, uh, presumably we'll have people at, at different stages of the um, subscription journey. But if you want access to the beyond secondary resources, they do come under the ultimate subscription level, which I think is uh, is nine. 999 if you pay monthly you can find all the information via the membership tab over on the site but there is a secondary all option too so if you want a slim down i think you've got to scroll down there it is it says looking looking for secondary memberships so if you don't think you need a million resources and it's very much the secondary resources 
that you want to focus on that is available uh, for a cheaper price than Ultima. So there's two options in terms of getting full access to those secondary resources. And actually the secondary all, um, it, I mean, it tells you what it's got here, but you do retain access to all of the, the core resources as well, which is, um, yeah, a lot. I think it's about 600,000 of the, of the million that we were talking about so you don't you don't miss out on much so that's worth thinking about too